Hello and welcome back audience, my name is Massive Brad and welcome back to my FIFA 20 Liverpool career mode. Now before we get into today's episode, I just want to say a huge big thank you for love and support on the channel. And as always guys, at the start of today's episode, we're quickly going to look at the games that lie ahead. Up first, we have Norwich away from home in the Premier League. We then face off now out of the group stages and into the knockout stages in the Champions League. We face off against Benfica in the round of 16. And then we face off for the final game in today's episode back at Anfield to take on the Hammers West Ham also in the Premier League. Now at the end of the last episode, we touched on I'd be playing Norwich, I'd be playing Benfica and we'd be simulating the home game against West Ham. Now something I have to make you guys very aware of at the start of today's episode because... Two episodes ago, I mentioned that once we finished the January transfer window in the first season at Liverpool, I would be starting my <clears throat> new career mode. I'm obviously not telling you guys what team it is. You guys have no idea, but I was going to launch it. Unfortunately, in the last episode, when we played Southampton, after I finished playing Southampton, I should have told you guys, by the way, the next video on the channel is going to be <clears throat> career mode. It's not going to be Liverpool career mode. I didn't plug it as such, guys, did it? I forgot to tell you guys about it. So what I'm doing today is I'm now finishing off February. And although we're going to be a month behind now, when we finish off February in today's episode, the next video you see will be of the <clears throat> career mode. So whatever that team is, that's going to be the next episode, the very first episode of that career mode. Now, this video should be going out on the 1st of November, which falls nicely because it means the new series will be starting on a Monday. Let me just check the date because I, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, yes, this video should be going up on the 1st of November. And if it has, it means that mm, career mode will be starting on the 4th of November, which is a Monday. And obviously, I've told you guys that I'll be playing two seasons at Liverpool and two seasons at... Mm, I can't tell you guys the team name. But we'll be doing two seasons at each and then we'll be stopping and looking to do either a road to glory or a going for goal. Not a going for goals, a one season wonder. Obviously, you guys will be voting what you'd like to see after this. But obviously, I was planning to start the new career mode at the end of the January transfer window in season one of this career mode. Unfortunately, because I forgot to remind you guys in the last episode, I'm here doing it right now. So you guys will not forget. So on Monday, there's a brand new career mode dropping, which will run alongside the Liverpool career mode. And then let's just say I have a week A and a week B. Week A will be Monday and Wednesday will be the Liverpool career mode. And on Friday, you'll get the other career mode. And then the following week, you get Monday and Wednesday of the career mode, the other one. And then Friday, you'll get a Liverpool episode. And I'm going to run both of these alongside each other, just like we did with the Ajax Road to Glory and the Liverpool career mode on FIFA. 19 also why i'm reminding you guys about stuff don't forget down below in the description there is a link to my game heroes mcmillan cancer support page where you can go and donate if you'd like to we are doing a 24-hour live stream on the 8th of november at 5 p.m in the uk time we'll be streaming from the friday at 5 p.m right the way through till saturday at 5 p.m we're going to be doing all challenges along the way i'm going to be in the world's hottest chili we're going to be doing giveaways be giving away um, hoodies and t-shirts from a clothing line be giving away these copies of games a computer and also if we do manage to hit the five thousand pound i'll be shaving my head completely bold live on stream for you guys to watch if you haven't followed me on twitch already i'll leave my twitch down below in the description go and click the link it's free create an account follow me it's no different than youtube you set it up with your email address password it'll ask you for a couple of personal details like your first name surname the usual stuff like it does when you set up a youtube account you get an account you go to my page, you follow it, and then when I go live, you'll get a notification. But honestly, guys, if any other people can go and donate to the page, that would absolutely be wonderful. Or if you're waiting for me to start the stream, and then you're going to donate to the page, let me know down below in the comment section what you're donating, or have I got to do something to get that donation? Um, yeah, whatever you guys really want to say. Again, Trev was up my first donation of £20. Thank you again, Trev. It honestly means so much. And if anyone would like to follow in his footsteps, you know, guys, you know, if you were to donate, let's say £10, that's a takeaway on the weekend or that's going to pictures with your mates or that's going to the shop to buy yourself some munchies for the weekend. Honestly, if you can sacrifice something like not going to the cinema this weekend or, you know, not buying some FIFA points or something and give the money to a good cause, that would be hugely and massively appreciated. But don't forget, guys, in your diary, the 8th of November at 5 p.m. in the UK, we will be doing a 24-hour live stream. And remember, if you're watching this video on the 1st of November, Firstly, happy 1st of November. I can't believe there's only this month plus December to go till the end of the year, which is absolutely crazy. Christmas will be here in absolutely no time. But happy 1st of November. And on Monday, you guys get a brand new series with a brand new team on career mode. Hopefully you are all very, very excited for that. But up first, 
we've got Norwich away from home. It's a game we are going to be playing, and you guys know that probably over the last five or six episodes, we've we've struggled in some games. We've had some draws, we've had some losses, but in the last episode, I really felt like we turned it round. I've been practicing with the tactics, so telling each player individually what to do. So if we go a little bit attacking, Fabinho will drop back, Henderson and Naby Keita will push forwards, or Gino or whoever's in there. So. I really think the tactics are working and I've probably spent now easily an hour and a half, maybe two hours playing games off camera with the tactics. So just playing a play match, just a quick match, playing Liverpool versus whoever, just randomise it and then start playing with the tactics. So I'll have Salah coming back to defend and help out, but then Manny will be pushing forwards. I've got Bobby dropping back and I really think now there's only two positions that I may need to change up when we default play. So when we're just on default, so we're not defensive, ultimate defensive, attacking, ultimate attacking. When we are just default, there's only two positions I think I need to continue to play around with. And that's because I'll show you guys now as we get into the Norwich game. And it might give you a little bit of a better idea. But certainly playing around with the tactics. I think especially in the last episode, we went 2-0 down to Southampton. We managed to bounce back. And yes, we didn't get the win. Alex oxlade Chamberlain at the crossbar in like the 89th minute. But we did pull it back to 2-2. It could have been 3-2. If the Ox would have just kept the shot down, unfortunately he didn't. Now, as we look at this team here, guys, we'll go through the team and I'll, I'll should tell you the lineup first. So we've got Ryan Kent out on the left wing, Divock Origi at striker, Shakiri on the right wing. Now, Bikita Lincoln up with the captain, Jordan Henderson in the central midfield. A little deeper, we've got Marco Grujic in the central defensive midfield. And then Max van Dijk Gomez and Klein at the back with Alisson between the sticks. Now, obviously in two days' time, we're playing Benfica. So that's the first reason for, you know, no Bobby, no Salah. No Mane. I've got to make sure I'm rotating the team as much as we can. Same with Fabinho. He's not in the team because we're saving him for Benfica. But right now, I always tell you about... We've got Marco Grujic here and then two centre mids just in front of him in Naby Keita and Henderson. Now, what I tend to do is we get like that triangle shape, right? But I play with a tactic where it's more like this, okay? So you've got... I'm trying to explain this the best way, guys. So instead of having... A CDM and then two centre mids. It's like I've got a CDM, a centre mid, and a central attacking mid. It's like I've got a line, a bit of a spine. And how that works is I have Marco Grujic stay back, and if they've got us on the counter attack, he drops back between my two centre backs. That's where I've got the CDM positions, whether it's Marco Grujic, Henderson, Pedro Chiravella, Fabinho. That's how it works. He's going to sit in front of the defenders, the two centre backs, Van Dijk and Gomez. As soon as they get us on the counter, He's going to slip back in between them, which I think is great. Then we've got Henderson, right? Now, it was very difficult for me to work out. Do I want the right centre mid in Henderson or the left centre mid in Naby Keita? Which one of them do I want pushing forwards and scoring goals and getting assists? I decided to go with Naby Keita's side, so on the left side. So what Henderson does is Henderson now moves across, basically, in front of Marco Grujic. He attacks forwards when we're attacking, but will drop back pretty quick. He also drops back when we need to defend. So, Grujic stays back and defends well. Henderson moves up and down the pitch. And Naby Keita, who's the left central midfielder, he pushes forwards with the attack and constantly free roams up the top. So, now playing at left centre mid, we're only going to have players like Keita, the Ox, and Bruno Fernandes. Three players that are quick, got a decent shot, flair, and will get plenty of assists. On the right side, so in Henderson's position, we'll play players like Henderson, like Milner, like Pedro Chiravella, like Marco Grujic if Fabinho was playing at CDM and Henderson wasn't fully fit. So more defensive-minded players. So we have someone that just concentrates on sitting back and defending and helping out the defenders. We have the player in Henderson, or the right centre mid, should I say, because it doesn't matter whether it's Henderson or we put Grujic there, or we put Fabinho there, or we put Naby Keita there. Even if we move Naby Keita over, that position is known to sit in the middle of the park, drop back and help defend, but push forwards if we're running forward. So he's box to box, basically, guys. That probably makes it a little bit more um, explained to you guys. He's box to box. Then with Naby Keita, he's just constantly pushing forwards and free roaming in behind the left wing, the right wing, and the striker. So he's free roaming. He'll be playing all over the pitch. So the reason I can't do that for both centre mids is what I found, because I tried it is they get very tired. When I've got Henderson and Naby Keita pushing forwards, dropping back, free roaming all over the place, they get tired. So it means I have to take the two centre mids off every single game, and we can't afford to always do that. So by having Grujic defensive, Henderson in the middle, box to box, Naby Keita just pushing forwards and only ever coming back to the midfield, never defending, Henderson will defend, Henderson will attack, Naby Keita only attacks, 
Grujic only defends. Hopefully that clears things up for you guys. And that's why the three players that are only ever going to play left centre mid in Naby Keita's place is obviously Naby Keita. You've got the Ox. We could play Gini with Naldum there, I suppose, and Bruno Fernandes with Henderson's side. We need more of the slower players that can control the game. Your Henderson, your Milner, your Lalana could play there, your Pedro Chiravella. You guys get the idea. I'm not going to go on too, too much about it. I'll just show you guys this tactic working. Now, if it works, we should travel here to Carra Road and we should do over Norwich 3 or 4 nil. I'd like to hope that we'd keep a clean sheet, but most importantly... I'd like us to score three or four goals. Now, obviously, we're not playing the full-strength team that we usually would as the starting eleven. We've got to save that for Benfica. But it'll be interesting to see what we do against Norwich now and then what we do against Benfica when we play the proper starting eleven on these new tactics. Come on, lads. I really want to show you guys at home that the new tactics will work. The things that I've learned, like not dragging, uh, dragging out your centre-back to either the left-back or right-back position, that unfortunately just comes from the old FIFAs. I'd always uphold Van Dijk across to help out and get that ball. You cannot afford to do that anymore, guys. If you feel like you're conceding a lot of goals, trust me, you're probably fine that you're pulling your centre-backs into the CDM role, so you're pulling them forwards too much, or you're pulling them out onto the wings, the left-back or right-back position too much. Don't do that, because when a ball comes in, you've got one tall defender, and if they've got two or three players in the box, you're seriously going to start to struggle. I do apologise as well, guys, that some of you might have been thinking today was the day you were getting the brand new career mode with the mm team. But unfortunately, because I forgot to plug it in the last episode, but I plugged it in the episode before that, I thought I should remind you guys on the video, and then the next episode will be it. So obviously, I've let you guys know today, so on Monday, you'll have that brand new series. As Norwich do get us kicked off in this first half period, let's get into this, and hopefully the tactics... We'll speak for themselves. There's Klein. Let's go, Klein. Ball through to Amadou. We've got to be careful there. Ball through. Great save from Allison. Norris looking pretty dangerous. We're only six minutes in and they're, uh, they're passing well at the moment. We'll just do some damage. Ball in. Allison should have that, no problem. Now, what we'll do is we'll boot her up field here and we'll see if Shakiri wants to go here. Go on, Shakiri. Get in behind. I'm pretty sure the keeper's going to get there. No, the keeper hasn't come. Shakiri's in behind. Absolutely beautiful. Shit on Shakiri. And again. He's put it wide. chances will they get to break the deadlock I'm not sure the worst thing about that is it was on his stronger foot as well what a ball from Allison. we should be 1-0 up there shoulda, woulda, coulda Henderson going to play it through there now to Divock Origi he's going to turn his man and hit it on that right foot great save from Farman and it was nearly another goal there from Divock Origi beautiful, beautiful bit of play there it's Henderson Go in now to Nabikita. He's going to drop the shoulder and try and wiggle his way in there. He's going to play it through now to Henderson. Henderson going to lose the ball as they tried to wiggle my way through. Henderson loses the ball. Let's try and win that now with Kent. Through to Divock Origi, who rolls his man on the volley. Oh! That would have been beautiful if he'd have just dinked it over, beat the player. Look at that little dink. If he'd have hit that and kept it down, that could have been beautiful. Remember as well, guys, that... This is my only second time playing with these tactics, but this is what I felt was most comfortable. So it takes me a little bit of time to get used to these new tactics. Here's Naby Keita. Thought it would have been nice if he'd have just kept his uh, his back to him, but unfortunately the referee is going to blow for half-time at Carroll Road. They were certainly very strong. I thought Norwich were an unbelievable team in our first 15 minutes. After that, we've really picked up. The nerves have settled. And as I was saying, guys, I don't know whether it would have been left in the cut or not. But this is only my second time using these tactics. So tell them players what to do, running behind, all stuff like that. But this is the tactic I felt was most balanced. Right now, Naby Keita is not getting up the pitch enough for me. So I'm just quickly going to check and I'll show you guys. As you go to instructions, you can select a player. Now, Naby Keita has been told to get forwards. So he's not staying back. He's to get forwards and he's to free roam. Maybe I tell him to stick position. We'll see how he does in the second half on stick to position. Maybe he'll stay... Or do I want him to free roam really, don't I? No, let's let's stick with it now. I just want to double check that he certainly is on push forwards. And I'll show you guys, from showing you the instructions, it's probably a bit easier. You see, Naby Keita's attacking support is just to get forwards. Marco Grujic 
is to cut the passing lanes and stay back while you attack them. And Henderson is balanced, so get forwards, but also get back. Gives you an idea if you maybe want to be doing something with tactics yourself. If you'd like me to do a video on how I worked out what the best tactics were for each player in each position, let me know down below, and I can certainly do that video for you guys if it's something that you'd be interested in and you are struggling right now to score goals and keep clean sheets. But as we get the second half kicked off with Divock Origi, let's get it on the way. Philip Max is going to try and bring that ball down. Buenadi is going to win it. Ball now going to come in. Van Dijk should be all over that one. It's Henderson to Marco Grujic. Back to Henderson. Will now go out wide to Jadon Shakiri. Will go into Divock Origi, who potentially wants to just take on these defenders. He's going to get his pace and get away from this man. He has done. There's Divock Origi. Through on goal. 1-0 Liverpool. Big Divock. Uses his strength. Uses his speed. Tucks him behind those defenders. And finally, we take the lead. Now that's something I've set with Divock Origi. If we're struggling out wide, he drifts out wide for us. So he drifted a little bit more towards Shakiri, took it out wide, but still managed to bury it. Whereas with Firmino, if we were playing attacking, I'd rather Firmino be more of a, a false number nine and say a more centre. But there we go. We do go 1-0 up in the 63rd minute. Thanks to Divock Origi. Hopefully now, that just opens many more goals to come. Here's Genie Through now to Naby Keita. Go in to Divock Origi. He's going to turn his man. Divock once again has turned his man. Divock through on goal. It's going to be the same sort of goal. And Divock scores a brace. Divock Origi. See? I tell you guys, it works. And again, Naby Keita, look at him. His arms out. He's pushing forwards now. He's in a striker's position there. That's what we want. We've got Gini with Naldum just behind. So... He's default if we're defensive and we're, they're getting us on the counter-attack. Genie will stay back, but if we start attacking, Genie will push forwards. That's what I like to see from this Liverpool team. Ball through the middle now for Dermot. Ball in there. That's a great ball in behind. Allison, come out for it. And unfortunately, Amadou manages to put it in the back of the net. We're not going to get to keep a clean sheet. It's a nice bit of football there from Norwich. Quick little passes in behind. And once he got behind Van Dijk, it was between one-on-one, -on -one, him and Allison. And unfortunately, Allison didn't get to the ball. It's 2-1 with eight minutes to go. We're not throwing this away. They're really, really starting to uh, punish us now. Gini now going to put a lovely ball in behind there for Ryan Kent to run to. Ryan Kent still coming here. I need Divock Origi to back off a little bit, really. Play it in now to Divock Origi. We're not going to get that ball in. Philip Max going to win the header. Go on, Naby. Good lad. He wins it. And referee's going to blow for full time. Well, we managed to beat them 2-1. So, I'll take it. It's a win. The tactic worked well for everyone other than Naby Keita right now. So I may have to see how he plays against Benfica. Or more than fact, just the left centre mid. See how he play, that player plays against Benfica. But, 8 shots, 4 on target. Ain't too great. Norwich had 7 shots, only 1 on target. Divock Origi picks up a man of the match with a 9.1. Picking up himself 2 goals and scoring a brace as well. Very, very impressive how the team played there. We're now going to get into the post-match interview to see what the media have to say. They're probably going to talk about, did we feel pressure from Norwich? Certainly did in the first 15, and I certainly did in the last 10 minutes towards the end of the game. But apart from that, we controlled the game nicely. And although we didn't keep a clean sheet, we did get the win. Here we are, the post-match interview. We can chat to you, yeah, fire away. What are your questions? With two goals to secure a win, Origi was the hero today. Any thoughts? Yeah, it's big Divock Origi. That's my thought. Overall great performance. We can't really rely on individuals. A very impressive performance from Divock Origi, especially because the angle that he had and the way he pushed himself into a great position was unbelievable. You clearly should have won, considering your opponent did Liverpool play as well as you expected, though. Um, no, we didn't play as well as I would like with these new tactics, but as we say there, job done today. The bottom line is we want to keep winning. We can't afford to lose. You won a game. Do you think that Norwich City played well? I do. I do, I do, I do. Uh, not as well as us. There's no stopping us. The lads did it. See, there's no option to say that Norwich... See, the question now is, did Mo Norwich City make it too easy? Um, yeah, the lads done it. The credit does go to the lads and obviously me controlling them. But we played very, very well. Against that Norwich, considering the first 15 minutes, I, I was really worried. So we're back to the mid-week late-night kickoffs in the Champions League. It's the round of 16, and it's our first leg against SL Benfica. We are away from home, but I am very, very excited for this one. We're going to attend to the press conference. We're then going to look over the team, and I'll explain what's going on. And hopefully, 
We just got the win over Norwich. Now, the way my tactics are set up, guys, you're going to hear me go on and on and on about tactics, and that's because I really think it's improved my gameplay. For me, Liverpool are a team that press a lot. High pressure, chasing the ball all the time. Constantly getting people on the counter-attacks. Putting it down the wings for Mo Salah and Mane to run to is important. But the main thing I think that Klopp tells the players to do is suffocate the players. When the opposition is playing it round at the back, you'll see that Bobby, Salah, Mane, and normally Genie or Henderson will sort of, the front three will cause a triangle to cut off the lanes, the passing lanes so they can't pass. And the other players that are free will press that player. And you just starve them of oxygen. You literally strangle them. You choke them. You force them into a corner. And the only way out is to give the ball up. And that's something that Liverpool are very, very good at. And that's how I've set up the tactics. That's how I've set up when we go a little bit pressing or team pressing or whatnot. That's exactly what we do. I'm hoping with a slight change again in this SL Benfica game to the Naby Keita position or the left centre mid. I think Ox is playing there for the game against Benfica. Hopefully we see a different with Ox. He's getting forward, he's getting assist, potentially even his name on the score sheet. But let's attend the press conference as the media are gathering to ask questions about this game against Benfica. Then we'll look over the squad and then we'll get out there to pick up a win. Here we go. Thanks, guys. We can get going now, yeah? We can get going. What do you want to ask? Which Nalum is in good form? Will we see more of him today? I think Gina Which is on the bench. If that was an option, I would say that, but it's not. Uh, nothing personal. Rotation is key. Switching tactics. Switching tactics. We are technically switching tactics. That's probably the first time I've ever answered with that one because we have changed up the tactics. Uh, what do you think the result of this round will be considering you are facing SL Benfica uh, who aren't in the best position? Um, yeah, we respect our opponents. We're not going to say talk negatively, negative about them. It doesn't matter where they are in the league, really. They can still turn up against us. Is there a specific tr strategy that you'll propose to the match, propose for the match against SL Benfica, given the context of them? I miss the rest of it. Sorry, guys. Is there a strategy you'll propose? Um, yeah, we'll replicate what worked. In the last game, it worked against Norwich, although it was only 2 1. See, the pressure is high on everybody. And especially now we change up the tactics. Okay, guys, we'll that left centre mid attention. where the Ox and Nabikita and, and players like that will play are really going to become tired and fatigued very, very, very quick because they're constantly getting up and down the pitch whether we defend, whether we need to get back and defend, they're defending, whether they're in the middle of the park playing the ball left, right, up, down. They're doing that. And then, of course, when we run forwards and move forwards, they're also doing that. So it's... Uh, it's very difficult right now for me to kind of keep on top of it. You can see, unfortunately, Henderson, Van Dijk and Alisson aren't fully fit, but it's a game against Benfica. It's our first game in the knockout stage of the Champions League. We cannot afford in this first leg, really, to uh, to lose. It's not really an option. We're really going to have to play good football here. But with that starting eleven, I'm hoping we can do that. We've got Sadio Mane out on the left wing. Bobby Firmino back in the striker position. We did drop him, and we keep rotating him with Divock Origi. Hopefully, as he gets a chance here to sink his teeth into Benfica, he'll do so and show me why he needs to get back to be our number one striker. Because right now, Divock Origi and Bobby Firmino are on the same level. Neither of them are outstanding. Neither of them are becoming our number one right now. One of them needs to really, really shine. And at the moment... It's Divock Origi with the brace in the last game. Then we've got Salah out on the right wing. We've got Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain linking up with Henderson in the central midfield. A little deeper, we've got Fabinho in the central defensive midfield. And then Robertson, Van Dijk, Matip and Trent at the back with Alisson between the sticks. Let's get into this game. I'm hoping for another win under the belt. I'm hoping the tactics will come through and show you guys that the tactics really do make a difference because I've been struggling to score more than two goals. So if we manage to do that, it shows that the tactics work. Come on, Bobby, we need you to well, be doing okay. what we Bobby Firmino does in real life. The, the fancy flicks, the, first the first unbelievable assists, the and the, the goal now and again. Palpable. Most importantly, at least having a couple of shots on target every game. That's what Bobby Firmino brings to the team in real life, and that's what we need him to bring. I'm not expecting him to score 30, 40 goals a season. He's not that type of player. He's not an Aguero. He's not a Robert Lewandowski. He's not a Ronaldo. He's not a Messi. He's not a Suarez. He's something else, but it works, and that's why I want him back to his fire and ways, and I want him to be the Bobby Firmino we all love and enjoy to watch, 
But as Benfica get us kicked off in this first off period, let's get it on the way. And please let these tactics work. Ball played back there. There's Gabriel. Ball over the top. It's a great ball in behind. Is he going to be onside as well? That is a cracking ball. And that is a cracking goal from De Thomas. Well, they worked on that one at the training ground. What a ball over the top. Watch Trent doing. Why is Trent in a centre-back position? Why is he not run out wide with that player? Trent causes me a few problems being out of position. But it's been five minutes and the Thomas has put us 1-0 down. Go on, Henderson, apply that pressure. Nicely done, Mo Salah going to pick it up. Feed it through there now to Mane. Beautiful, Mane. Back onto his left foot. Sadio Mane! Great save there from the keeper. That's a bit better. That's a little bit better, lads. Come on. Let's go, Bobby. That's where he needs to move now, son. That's where he needs to move. Play it through to the Ox. He's wanting to go. The Ox has now got Mane around the back. Beautiful. Here comes Mane. Onto his right foot. Mane going to look to bend one towards the far post. It's a great save once again. We're playing better football now. It took us a little bit of time to get going. In fact, it took us nearly the whole first half. But I'm just hoping in the second half, we can do something about it. Henderson plays back to Fabinho. The referee's going to blow for half-time. The heads are going to drop here at half-time because we are, unfortunately, 1-0 down away from home. I'm not sure what it is for me. Um, the playing long balls and the getting in behind, that, that's the unfortunate issue right now. I'm going to have to have a look. Although Henderson wasn't fully fit at the start of this game. I'm going to have to see over the next couple of episodes how Henderson Henderson's fitness goes. Because right now, Ox is the player running up and down the pitch. Henderson just sits back. But Henderson has got less fitness. Although, Henderson did start this game not fully fit. So that might be the only reason. And if he was fully fit, he may have a lot more energy than the Ox. But regardless, we need to get into the second half. We're going to have to dig deep here, lads, if we want this win. We have to dig deep. Don't let him get the better of you. Don't get on your better side. Good lad. Ball into the middle. That's a problem. Ball through now. Allison's come for it. It's off the crossbar. Come on, Bobby. Nicely done. Bobby now going to give it to Manny. This is it. This is it now. Give it in to Henderson. Henderson on the edge of the box. Looks to Ben. It's going to come back to Henderson. Lay it off now to Bobby Firmino. who's going to line one up. It's a great save again. Their keeper is like a salmon out of water. Play it. Then through to Mane now, beautiful. Mane in behind. There we go, the equaliser from Sadio Mane. What a goal. Milner celebrates with him. Bobby and Bruno Fernandes, who's only just come onto the pitch. Both James Milner and Bruno Fernandes coming on. Who did the original ball come from? So, Fabinho into... I can't work out who num what number that is there. It was a great ball, though. Great ball, well-timed. Into Sadio Mane. And we finally get the equaliser. Here's Fabinho. Mo Salah. Going into Bobby. Bobby going to lay it off now to Mo Salah. Oh, why didn't you go with your left, Mo? Oh, another chance there. We're, we're starting to get more and more chances here. Milner going to win that one. Go on, Manny. I've got you, son. That's a terrible ball from Bruno Fernandes. No idea what that ball is. Going to intercept it now with Milner. Nice. Right, you don't play it through now to Mo Salah. Mo Salah through on goal. Yes! Finally! Wow. Great interception there from Melly. Ball into Bobby. Feeds it through. And Mo just gets there on his weak foot. And I think. But we've beaten Benfica here. There's not going to be much after they kick off. There we go. Lovren's going to get here. 13 seconds on the pitch. We are 2-1 up away from home. So we've got two away goals. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now I know Bobby Firmino got the assist for Mo Salah's goal. What I want to see is who got the assist for the other goal. So if we go, goals were scored by Mo Salah and Mane. Goal assist. Bruno Fernandes was the one that put the ball through to Mane. He was on the pitch for maybe 20 minutes, and that's the difference that Bruno Fernandes brings to this team. I'm not saying he's anything near Coutinho, but he does bring that aspect of the flair, the quickness, the skill, most importantly the assist, because it shows that's exactly what he's doing. And our front three, four shots from Mane all on target, 
two shots from Bobby all on target and two shots from Mo Salah both on target. So very, very happy with our shots on target. So what does that give us? 12 shots, 10 on target. Wow. That was a real good performance and it shows you guys, although we only beat them 2-1, we deserve the win and the tactics are really showing now. 12 shots with 10 on target. That's back to the Liverpool that we used to love and adore playing with. Bobby Firmino picks up man of the match with an 8.1. Divock Origi got man of the match in the last game. They're both fighting very well for their place right now. But let's get into the post-match interview. We'll talk to the media, see what they have to say. We'll get back to the central, get the team lined up for the final game against West Ham in today's episode. Hopefully, three out of three wins. It's important we don't really lose that game because Spurs right now are seriously starting to drift away at the top. There we are. Just a minute of your time. You can have more than a minute after that result. Unbelievable. You managed to win your first leg despite playing an away match. Are you favourites to go through now? I wouldn't say so. Not yet. Uh, it's too early to tell. I'd say we're slight favourites. We need to be at our best. Yeah, I'd, it, it's too early to tell. I, I can't say that. You know, we scored two away goals. They could easily score two away goals. There's, there's no reason why not. So we're not going to be big-headed. Why didn't we get to see Gini Wijnaldum and play today? Um... Yeah, I'd like to, you know, competition is good, team comes first. Yeah, competition is good. I mean, he plays well, yeah, but he, when, we're, when we're bringing someone on the left position, we need to bring on like a Bruno Fernandes. It was a very tight match right until the end. Your team managed to score the win in the last minutes of the match. Luck was on your side, don't you think? Very much so. Very much so. Uh, luck had nothing to do with it. Sometimes you need a bit of luck. Yes, sometimes you do need a little bit of luck. That final ball through Mo Salah is on... He shoots with his right foot, his weaker foot, and somehow ends up in the back of the net. Although the keeper on the day made so many better saves than shots like that. Right, guys, and here we are about to take on the Hammers West Ham at Anfield. I'm excited for this one. We're simulating it, and we are at home. But as you all know, that the EA gods, when you simulate home games, are more likely to be in your favour than if you simulate away games. So I'm hoping, keeping my fingers crossed, we get that very important win because as you can see right now, we're joint second with Arsenal and Manchester United on 53 points. We've all played 26. Spurs, currently four points ahead of us, also played 26. So this is where we could do with Spurs losing or drawing and us making sure we get the win over West Ham. If we don't get the win and we draw or lose and Arsenal and Manchester United win, we're in some serious trouble because we could potentially again in today's episode be in risk of dropping out of the top four. Now, obviously, the, what I'm looking for this year from the team and me as a manager, new manager at Liverpool, top four is a must. That's at least I was looking to win the Premier League, but top four, I think, would be a realistic shout for Liverpool. So if we start dropping games and losing games in the simulated ones and other teams don't and they're going to start turning up, which we know from the latest patch, it's very unrealistic as such now because there's teams that go all season, win every game and draw one maybe. There's teams that go all season and don't lose or draw a single game. So EA have certainly made it a lot more difficult. And this is why when it's games like this, simulated games against West Ham at home, we must get the win. But unfortunately, it's in the hands of the EA gods. But the lineup we are putting out against West Ham is Sadio Mane out on the left wing, Bobby Firmino striker Salah out on the right wing, Gino Wijnaldum linking up with Jordan Henderson in the central midfield. A little deeper, we've got Fabinho in the central defensive midfield, and then Robertson, Gomez, Matip, and Trent at the back with Allison between the sticks. There's no Van Dyke in today's lineup because unfortunately, because we're playing in pretty much every single game, he's not getting back to that full fitness. So I thought against West Ham. The next game, which is going to be the first game in the next episode, is against Brighton in the final of the Carabao Cup. So we need Van Dijk back for that. We need all these players. Luckily enough, we do have five or six days rest in between this game and that game. But let's go ahead and get into the simulated game. Let's advance, get the players warm up. It's going to jump straight to the scoreline. And we draw 1-1. It's just not good enough. The worst thing of all is Henderson scores in the 87th minute. Philippe Anderson, or West Ham, should I say, pretty much, from kickoff from that Henderson goal, must have went and scored. Because Henderson scored in the 87th, Philippe Anderson equalises in the 88th. We should be absolutely annihilating West Ham, but unfortunately, we suffer a draw. We'll have to get back to the central and see how much that has affected our position in the table right now. Well, there's a few things we can take from today's episode. Well, we didn't lose. That's... That's a plus, I suppose, guys. We didn't lose. Um, 
we played real good football. Although we only beat Norwich 2-1, it was still a win and we played great football. Against Benfica, we were 1-0 down. We managed to pull it back to 2-1. We didn't give up. We showed heart. We kept fighting. And we managed to get the well-deserved win at the end of the game. We then, unfortunately, simulated the game against West Ham. We only managed to draw. But it's not in our hands, unfortunately. It's in the hands of the EA gods. But we didn't lose any games. We've played some great football in today's episode. And I really feel... I really feel... <laughs> Really, really reveal. I really feel like the tactics have changed the way the players play, the way we attack, the way we defend. It really makes a difference to me, especially controlling it. So like I've said to you guys, if you'd like me to make a video on that, if you'd like to see how I do my tactics and what players you need to be doing what, then let me know down below in the comment section and I'll certainly make that video for you. But the first game in the next episode is going to be the final of the Carabao Cup against Brighton. Currently, I'm doing for Brighton is the top goal scorer with five in the Carabao Cup so we've got Shaqiri down there on three Divock Origi on three I may have to put Shaqiri and Divock into the team they are currently not in the team but when it comes to the Carabao Cup I do rotate with some big players in there but I mainly play the kids and I mainly play players that struggle to get into the team so I think Jidan Shaqiri and Divock Origi are certainly going to have to be in that team but as we click into the standings I want to go and check the Premier League to see how that draw has affected us in the table, okay, we're third now. So, Arsenal lost, putting them now down into fifth on 53. They didn't get any points. We got a point, putting us into third. Joint with Chelsea right now on 54. United, of course, won their game, putting them up to 56. And Spurs must have drew their game because they're only on 58. Let's just have a little look. So, Chelsea won 2-0. Um... United won 3-0. City won 2-0. Chelsea and Tottenham drew. Wow. Chelsea held Bears to a draw. And that was our chance to capitalise, just like Manchester United did. Close that gap, close it to only two points. Unfortunately, the EA gods didn't really want us to have that. So it's still very, very difficult. It's not the end of the season yet. I don't think it's over yet. I think it's still up for anyone's uh, taken right now. But if Spurs get back to their winning ways and we keep dropping points, we unfortunately are probably going to suffer. So that's why I think we've got to keep turning it around and every episode we've got to keep fighting for it. Now, before we end today's episode, guys, we are going to take a quick look at the games that will be in the next episode. We start off the month of March. The 1st of March, we have Brighton in the final of the Carabao Cup. We then face off against Bournemouth at Anfield in the Premier League. And then we have the second leg against Benfica in the round of 16 Champions League. Now, of course, we're 2-1 up against that. So it's pretty obvious what we're going to be doing. We'll play the Brighton game because, of course, we want to lift our first piece of silverware. We were sadly knocked out of the FA Cup by Manchester City. But we've got a chance. We've reached a final here in the Carabao Cup. Hopefully, we can bring that cup home to Liverpool. The Bournemouth game, yeah, it's an important one because it's in the Premier League. But... We have to simulate it because we have to play the Benfica game. We can't risk simulating the Benfica game and getting kicked out of the Champions League. With the Premier League right now, we can get an odd point here and there of a draw. We can afford another loss or two throughout the whole season. But we can't afford to get knocked out of the Champions League. And I'm certainly not going to risk losing a piece of silverware to a simulated game against Brighton. Because I think we've got a great chance of beating Brighton and bringing that piece of silverware home. Now, before I finish on today's episode, guys, just another reminder that... You will be seeing this on the 1st of November. On the 4th of November on Monday, you won't be seeing a Liverpool career mode. We'll be starting a brand new career mode. I'll be a manager at another team. I'm not telling you guys what team it is. I never give any leaks or anything away. I have told nobody what that career mode is going to be. Hopefully, you're going to enjoy it. Let me know down below in the comment section some guesses what maybe league you think it's from. Is it the Premier League again? Are we going for the Serie A? Are we going for the Bundesliga? Is it La Liga? Is it League 1? Where are we going to be in the world? Are we going to the Chinese League? Where are we going? Drop your comments and opinions down below in the comment section and have a guess what you think I'm going to be managing on Monday when you see the next video. Um, and last thing to mention, guys, the 24-hour live stream. I'm going to keep plugging this right the way through because it's important that we raise as much as we can for charity. If you'd like to donate to the cause, there is a link down below in the description. I am streaming on the 8th of November. That's the Friday, the 8th of November at 5pm. And I'll be streaming right through till the 9th of November on the Saturday 
at 5 p.m. when I'll then finish and certainly be going straight to bed. No Niall, I won't be doing it for 48 hours. I can't do 48 hours straight. I'll probably struggle doing 24 hours. And that's why I need you guys to come along, chat to me, keep me going, cheer me on. And along the way with donations, if someone makes a big donation, I'll eat some horrible sweets or candy or I'll, I'm obviously going to eat the world's hottest chili if we get a thousand pound it'll be fun for you guys to watch and along the way if you want to say Brad I'll donate five pound right now if you smash a can over your head then I'll smash a can over my head if you guys want to give me little tasks to do along the way Brad you should smash a glass over I'm not going to smash a glass over my head that's stupid but you guys get the idea if you've got little uh, things that you'd like me to do, whether it's do an accent, whether it's uh, play a certain game for an hour and I have to do it, you know, play a horror game for half an hour for £5 donation or something, I'm totally up for that, guys. But the important thing that I cannot stress enough is this, or it's not this weekend, it's next weekend, give up a takeaway, give up going to the pitches, give up buying some bottles of beer, give up going to the shop and spending £5 on munchies this weekend. Donate it to a great cause in Macmillan Cancer Support. It'll honestly go so much further, guys. And you might give up a chippy tea or a takeaway, a pizza or an Indian or a Chinese. You give it up and you save yourself ten, fifteen pounds. You donate it to charity, and that ten, fifteen pounds won't go into someone's pocket for food. It'll go towards care of somebody that really, really needs it. It'll go towards the care of cancer patients. So please, guys, if any of you, as well as Trev can go to the page and donate. That would be absolutely unreal. And if you are waiting till me for me to do the live stream before you donate, drop a comment down below so at least I know you're going to donate. Let me know how much you're going to donate. Are you just going to donate because you want to donate? Or are you going to make me do something? Are you going to make me down a litre of milk? Are you going to make me, I don't know, do something crazy? Let me know down below in the comment section, guys. But that is going to do it for today's episode. If you have enjoyed it, please do give it a big thumbs up for me. Don't forget to drop your comments down below. If you're new around here, click that subscribe button. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. And after massive Brad, peace out.